glory to Jesus Christ. So a couple housekeeping things. First of all, I have a couple projects that are coming along the series of tubes and I'm really, really, really excited about them. I've got um, a lot of new improvements to the channel coming up. I've got a new blog, hopefully launching within the next day or two. And I'm also going to start going through all my archives of uh, inmate letters and art. And I'm going to be doing a series of videos on all of the communications that I had with Richard Ramirez, who was the Night Stalker. He died about six months ago. Uh, he had been on death row in San Quentin for like 24 years. And I actually have quite an extensive collection of things that he sent me. So I thought, well, since he's dead now, I can show them to you without feeling like I'm, you know, kissing it and telling. Anyway. That's not what this video is about. This video is just going to be a little quick. Um, touching base about a, a, a giant misconception that a lot of people have. And most of the time when I do one of these videos and I'm talking about how, you know, people have a misconception about one thing or another, it's because I had that misconception for a long time too. So if, you know, I found this information useful, hopefully you do too. Okay, now let's talk about Satan. This is one of my favorite topics because Satan, there's more... Um, false information about him floating around than about just about anybody. Think for a second. What is Satan's ultimate goal for humanity? What is he trying to do to me and to you? What is he trying to do? He, most people, if you ask him that question, feel free to pause this, by the way, and think about that if you want. I mean, it's, it's, this is really important stuff. If you ask most people that question, most people that I've asked anyway, They'll say, uh, Satan doesn't want me to believe in God. Or Satan doesn't want me to believe in Jesus or to believe that Jesus is God. Okay, those are very reasonable answers. To a certain extent, they may be true, but there's an even more sinister one than that. And you need to know about this. Look, Satan doesn't care in the final analysis if you believe in God or not. He believes in God. He knows who God is. Okay. So he doesn't really care if you're aware that God exists. He doesn't even actually care if you know that Jesus is God. You read about our Lord's encountering demons in the Gospels. The demons readily proclaim that they know who Christ is and that he is God. So the demons don't care if you know that. Right? They went ahead and spilled the beans thousands of years ago. Okay? They don't care. If you know that, that's fine. What they care about is keeping you from repentance. Remember this. Christianity is not just believing in the existence of God. It is not just believing in the existence of Jesus Christ as God. Or in the Holy Trinity. Or in the Virgin Birth. Or any one of those other elements of the gospel message and indeed the message of all of scripture the primary message in the bible the primary message of the writings of the church fathers of apostolic tradition of the 2000 year corporate history of the christian church is repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and that is what Satan does not want you to do or want me to do. Because he knows that if we are praying to God and repenting, he can't touch us. Because we're not going to let him in. Satan cannot drag you off the ladder of salvation unless you let him. So he knows that if you're praying and repenting and trying to get your life right with God, that every time you take a step toward God, God's going to take a billion steps toward you and Satan's screwed. So this is what he does. He loves it. If you're going around saying you're a Christian, he loves it. Does that surprise you to hear that? It surprised me to hear it a while ago. He loves it. Why? Because if you fall, and I mean if you fall like really bad, number one, you've just besmirched the name of the church. You've besmirched the name or the reputation of, of God and of Jesus, right? But what you've really done is put God to an open shame. And that 
is what Satan wants. See, Satan hates God. That's why he hates humanity, because we're made in the image of God. So in Hebrews 6, 6, St. Paul is trying to explain this. I believe it's 6, 6. Yes, it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come if they fall away if they sin, if they fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. That is the goal of the demons. Your, your, your second state will be worse than the first if you are not a godless heathen, if you are in some way a Christian, and then you jump the shark. That hurts God even more because you're making a more educated decision to reject him. And that's what, that's what Satan wants. Repent. Repent. That's the message of this whole thing. And that's the message of the 2,000 year history of the Christian church. It is the message of the church today. Repent. Unfortunately, that word is very unpopular, isn't it? And if you ask people who believe themselves to be Christian, if you say, what's the message of scripture? What is God's message to humanity? 99 times out of 100, they're going to say, oh, it's the golden rule. Be kind to others and I'll be kind to you. No, no. That's the easy answer, but it's not accurate. Read the book. This is not my opinion. Read the Bible. Talk to your priest or your pastor or whoever you have. Okay, the word repent is used in the New Testament 23 times. 23 times. Five times alone in the Gospel of Luke. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So that is what you and I and all of us have to do with every breath, with every thought, with every heartbeat. As long as we are breathing on this mortal earth, it is our number one priority to put forth that effort to return to God. That's what repentance is. Repentance is turning around going the other way. So it's not just being sorry for sins, but it's saying, okay, not only do I need to beg God for forgiveness, but I need to stop sinning. I need to stop doing this thing that I know is wrong. That's the part people don't want to do. We love Jesus with a little lambikin, Jesus with a little baby, suffer the little children that come unto me. Awesome. We love the empty tomb on Easter, but what we fail to see is that, do you know what came before that? Do you know what came before conquering death? The cross came. And for Jesus, that cross was a physical death, right? Torturous death. Awful. Horrible. Slow. But for us, glory to God, we don't have to go through that. What we have to do is crucify our sins, crucify our will and say, you know what? Yeah, hmm, I might like to do that. That sounds like fun, but I, I'm not going to because I know that it will grieve God. Okay. That is the warfare that we have against Satan. Repent. That is the message. Everything else is secondary to repent. You have to do that if you wish to offer that timeless sacrifice of Christ on the cross for your own sins. You have to want it. So, don't listen to those demonic lies. The golden rule is not a Christian message at all, actually, is it? Because our human standards, God does not 
allow us to be content with those human standards. Oh, okay, we just treat, treat others as you want to be treated. Making our sinful human behavior the benchmark? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. How about nope? Have a big glass of nope. The standard is much higher than that. It's repentance through that timeless sacrifice of Christ on the cross, which we, inside created time, can offer outside of time to God Almighty. So repent for the kingdom is, of heaven is at hand. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. And I'll see you in the next video. God bless you.